Hey everybody, Fide Master Dennis Montecruz is here, and I suspect this is going to be a pretty long video. I put a lot of work into this. Uh, it's a bad habit of mine. I, I put in usually a pretty fair amount of work, in, and this time I really put in a lot of work. Anyway, um, I'm just warning you, this could be this could take a while. Um, the game we're going to look at, well, we're actually going to look at a bunch of games, but we're the the, uh, the feature game, I suppose, or the the main game. The outermost game is uh, one that was played just um, a few days ago in the European Individual Chess Championship in Plovdiv in Bulgaria. White and the winner in this game is Viktor Laznica, or Laznica, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name properly, uh, is a young, I think, Czech Grandmaster. Let me check that out, see if I'm right. But I'm bumped. Thank you, thank you. Yep, he's Czech, and his opponent is Romain Edouard of uh, France, another young guy. And um, I think Lesnitsa has also um, has also worked as a second for Viswanathan Anand. I might be wrong about that, but I think that's the case. At any rate, uh, the game was a very interesting uh, Queen's Gambit accepted, and I'm going to show a bunch of sub games that I think will really help you to understand how this uh, how this opening works, or at least this particular variation. So my hope is that you'll find this very instructive. We shall see, but that's my hope. All right, so off we go. Queen's Gambit accepted, and it's this classic line with knight to f3, as opposed to e3 or e4, which are which are also very important main lines. Now e3 can in fact transpose to knight f3 lines, but there's the added option for black that after e3, there's e5 in response. Anyway, knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6, and all of this has occurred billions of times. Okay, slight exaggeration. Um, C5 is the, the classic main line, or main move, but A6 has taken over for sure. Castle, C5, and then Bishop to B3, which I think is an idea of, um, of Geller's way back when. I might be wrong about that, but I think so. Anyway, Knight to C6, Knight C3, takes, takes, Bishop B7, Bishop G5, castles. Now, uh, first bit of information. Many of you who have seen or studied isolated D-pawn positions will know that one of White's major plans is to, to do this kind of classic battery, set this classic battery on the B1, H7 diagonal. Of course, we need A3 here to prevent knight to B4. And, um, you know, and then you go for mating threats. So you're threatening bishop takes F6. Sometimes there are tricks with D5, and then, you know, if E takes D5, knight takes D5. Or um, if there's a rook on E1 to play rook takes E7, and then after queen takes e7 to play, um, knight takes d5. So all kinds of stuff based on that. But one of the interesting things is that one day, I'm not sure who the first person to discover it was, but one day someone realized that queen to d2 is in fact a pretty darn good move here. And there are a couple of points to this, but the main idea is to play queen f4 and then swing the queen to h4. So it's uh, still geared at the, h, at the h7 point, but... It, um, it makes some new options available. One point is that if black plays g6 at some point, at some moment, to, uh, to, to close the, the b1, h7 diagonal when the white bishop gets to c2, well, in that case, there's some significant pressure along this way. So, for instance, if there's a rook here, white can play d5, and then there are threats like d6, which will displace the bishop, or the queen, one or the other, and then the knight on f6 will hang. Or if e takes d5, then rook takes e7 can show up. So it really makes quite a lot of sense. Then you, you furthermore don't have to worry about um, knight to, to b4, so you, you economize on the tempo with a3. And it's not just the tempo, but a3 weakens the light squares. I mean, then knight a5, c4 is maybe even more worrisome. Also, it immediately connects the rook, so it's a, it's a kind of a speedier approach. And, um, well, I, I think all of these assets are, are quite enough. Okay, so here... Well, what I'm going to do is, besides showing you this game, I'm going to show you a bunch of games featuring 2,700 plus players, and in all of them, white wins. So it's, this is, does not purport to be um, some kind of even-handed, neutral treatment. Now, it's not that I'm distorting anything, it's just that I'm showing what happens when everything goes well for white. That's all. So I'm not pretending that this, this variation is winning for white or anything like that. So I'm not, not fibbing, I'm not, I'm not selling a winning with kind of um, opening or video, but rather just trying to show what White's ideas are and, and really the power of this, this plan or set of plans really is for White. 
All right, now the main move here is knight to a5, and that's what happens in our game as well. But bishop to d7 has been tried uh, as well. And the thought is that, first of all, knight to a5 can happen sooner or later anyway, but uh, black hopes to, to maybe use this developing move, maybe bring the rook to c8 rather quickly. And also there are many setups where black plays b5. Uh, perhaps um, it's another tempo that can be economized. So uh, the bishop on d7 will be better placed for defense on d7 too, keeping e6 protected. Okay, we'll see about that. All right, um, in one game we have rook f to e1, in another game rook a to d1. So in the rook f to e1 gameplay continued like this, rook c8, rook a to d1, knight a5, and here it certainly um, seems to be, if not forcing then, at least very strongly encouraging the bishop to retreat to, to c2. But white had a very nice idea here. He played d5, knight b3, a b3, and here black has to be really careful. And in the game, in fact, he, he went downhill quickly. e takes d5 is the obvious move, and probably what he should have played. I suspect what he feared was rook takes e7, queen e7, knight takes d5. But surprisingly, black is okay. White has nothing special after queen d8, bishop f6, g takes f6, and now what? Um, queen d4 doesn't really lead to very much here. So white can regain his exchange, but this ending promises white a very tiny edge at best. If instead of queen to d4 he plays queen h6, which looks pretty strong, then rook c6, rook d4, aiming to play rook h4, rook e8, and now if rook to h4, black just wins with bishop to f5, because the knight's um, under attack on d5, and, um, well, there's just no more attack for, for white. This position is still even, but basically black is okay. And going back here, I think instead of this exchange sack, white really has nothing better than playing knight takes d5, and this is slightly better for him, though. So something like this. And now, yeah, the, the threat is to play f5, so we've got to get out of that pin. Black does um, have a weakened king side, but it seems that black can survive. There's, there's just not enough um, access to some of the weak squares around the black king. So between that and white's very nicely placed rooks and the pressure on the files, uh, the central files, white's better, but black is okay. Well, instead, black played h6, and, you know, it's kind of no points for this, for guessing this move. Of course, white just took on h6, and then not queen h6, although that might be good too, but simply d6 regains the piece. Black's kingside is in permanent disrepair, and this was done free of charge. Uh, actually, I take it back. This isn't a game between 2700s at the time. So it's uh, Caruana, who now is well over 2700, he's approaching 2800, um, and uh, the Romanian grandmaster Andrei Istratescu played in Switzerland in 2010. So they were both 2600s at the time. Uh, Caruana, a very high 2600. All right, so the game continued like this. So let's go through the moves pretty quickly. Okay, regains the piece, and now he's threatening knight to f5 check, so the queen jumps out of the way. Queen h4, and now white simply wants to lift his rook to d3 or e3, and then over to g3 or h3. And, in fact, this position is winning. So um, black managed to avoid getting mated, although perhaps if Caruana had played rook e to e3 here, mate would have ensued. But... This worked out well enough. So white just kind of cleaned everything up here and with two extra pawns, one without much difficulty. And we don't need to look at the rest of that because it's pretty simple. All right, so that was a rook f to e1 game. Another game <clears throat> saw rook a to d1. And uh, I think this is, let's see which this is. It's a pretty heavy hitter game. Yeah, this was Etienne Bacro, <clears throat> who was over 2,700, against, uh, again, Romain Edouard, played in, in Cannes in... Um, 2011. All right, knight a5, bishop c2, knight c4. We're going to see this idea many, many, many times. And generally, white plays queen f4 here, but in this position, I think it's not quite as effective. But we'll take a look. Queen f4, knight takes b2. So the rook on d1 is loose here. Queen h4, so white's, white's ready. He's got his threat. He wants to play bishop takes f6. So h6, bishop h6, and now Black can calmly play knight takes d1, and although it looks really, really scary, I don't see a forced win. Uh, if rook takes d1, then g6, and now if um, queen at g3 threatening to take on g6, knight h5, 
queen g4, knight f6, and I don't see anything better for white than the repetition. You could try some things with knight e5, but it looks like black is okay. But maybe I'm, I'm mistaken. But let's look. So if knight to e5, here we go, jumping in, then rook c8. And again, it looks like white's got a million promising moves here. Queen g3, knight g6, bishop g6, rook d3, d5, even just taking the exchange back. But I think that generally speaking, black is okay. But I, I'm probably wrong. I, I would not be surprised at all. The, the only issue is that white has these loose pieces on the C file. And, you know, if black can play, you know, like if bishop f8, bishop f8, the bishop goes to g7, he's pretty well covered up. White, or black might also be able to play bishop to e8 and, um, you know, kind of strong point on g6. So I, I think black survives, but give it a try. All right, back to this position. We just looked at rook takes d1, g6, and so on. Well, bishop g7 is also a try, but... Again, it doesn't seem to lead to anything decisive. Um, White's pieces are just a bit too far back, and he is a rook and a bishop down at the moment for just a pawn. So I think there's nothing really more than perpetual check here. So going back to here, I think queen e2, as played by Bucro, is, is a better choice. Rook c8, bishop b3, b5, knight e5, and white slightly better. Well, in the game, black decided to retreat the knight, hoping to uh, plant it on d5 at some point, but he's really not that well equipped for it. See, knight to d5 here is just losing material, while if he prepares it with bishop to e8, then maybe... No, I guess knight f7 doesn't work just yet, so maybe he could try that. I'm not positive. Uh, d5 is also, is also something to be wary of, as well as rook lifts, uh, rook d3, rook h3, and so on. But um, Edward's choice of h6 is pretty implausible. So of course Bukro took, even though he's only getting one pawn at the moment. G takes h6, and now d5 is in fact pretty good even here. So it's kind of remarkable. Black uh, is up a full piece, or up a piece for pawn, and it can turn it into a full piece, but with the board blasting open, uh, bad things happen. And in fact, the tactics work out for white. So here white's regaining the piece with the superior ending. But even better than d5 is just rook to d3. And I think black is um, in danger. Well, he's clearly in considerable danger. If he plays b4, for instance, then check. Bishop c2. And the idea is now to play queen e3. At least that's one of the ideas. Knight g8, queen h5. Bishop e8. Rook takes g8. Queen h6. Okay, f5 is forced. And now the threat is to play queen h8, check. King f7, knight e5, mate. So it just keeps coming. All right, and now bishop to b3. So the threat's to uh, take on e6 and just win the house. So knight c4 gives up some portion of the house, but he gets that knight still. Here, white has four pawns for a piece. Black's king is exposed. Really, this has to be winning for white in the long run. All right, going back to this position. Instead of b4, uh, Edward played the better king to h8. Queen to d2, threatening mate, knight to g8, well, um, quick mate anyway, knight g8, d5, so blasting the board open once again, knight c4, takes, takes, rook d4, and here with queen to e8, black still had chances to, to survive. He's still up a piece for a pawn, obviously his king side is very exposed, white has a tremendous space advantage, but black isn't dead yet. After bishop to c5, he is dead. D takes E6 was played, Bishop D4, Queen D4, and now the uh, the discovered and double check threats are are just devastating. Black played Queen F6 to close the diagonal, but after E takes D7, White's now attacking for free. He's got a knight and two pawns for the rook, and a much better position. Rook C to D8, Rook E3, headed for F3, Knight E7, Rook F3, Knight C6, and now Knight takes F7 end of the game. Black resigned because after rook f7, white just trades and is up um, several pawns. How many pawns? Three pawns up. So maybe he'll lose one, but probably he'll get back h6 or a6. Okay, so that was, going way back, what can happen in case of bishop to d7. So let's stick to the usual move here, knight a5. Alright, white plays bishop c2, and here black has tried couple of moves that we'll look at, knight to c4 and b5. 
So, knight to c4. Um, here, white has played queen to e2, but maybe queen to d3, or sorry, um, queen of 4 is possible too. Queen d3, knight b2, queen e2, which looks kind of strange, might be even better. And it's kind of amusing because in the game we're going to look at, it went queen e2, um, and then after knight to b6, queen to d3. So a strange little uh, triangulation there. All right, the th so now we have kind of a traditional approach here. Black has to play g6 to stop the threat of bishop f6 and queen h7. And now the usual procedure is once black closes that diagonal, especially in the when the bishop and queen are on the same, same line there, the bishop switches back to the a2 g8 diagonal, and now we look for threats um, against e6 or with d5. Or sometimes knight e5, knight takes f7. All right, black played bishop d5, c7, knight e5, bishop c6, rook f to e1. So now knight takes f7 is, is immediately in the air. Sometimes that comes about with white playing queen h3 first also, so you should be aware of that version too. Well, black plays knight b to d5, closing the bishop, but, well, as I just mentioned, queen to h3, and now the threat is to play bishop h6, and after rook e8, knight takes f7, because king f7, queen e6 is checkmate. So black needs to do something about this. He plays knight to h5. And um, the point is that if bishop h6, knight g7, and the rook gets to, uh, to maintain protection on f7. So bishop takes e7. Uh, by the way, we're following the game uh, Bakro against um, Antonevsky, I guess is a rough approximation of the pronunciation, played in Warsaw in 2011. So here, black should play queen takes e7. And he's probably nervous about tricks uh, against his queen on the d file, but it looks as if he can survive thanks to the knight f4 um, intermezzo. So, for instance, takes, 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 and then not e takes, knight g6, but knight f4. So, white can still try to use this trick, but it's not as big a deal here. White is up a pawn, but it's not a very effective one, and I think after queen f6, something like this, the position is pretty much equal, surprisingly enough. So, that would have been the best way to go. Instead, he played knight takes e7, and now, after knight f7, even though the rook is on, on f8, black is still getting shellacked. If he plays rook f7, the problem is this, and this is another standard trick. Queen takes e6, bishop e8, or queen f8, doesn't matter. Queen takes e7, and white is now two pawns up, plus he's winning the exchange by capturing on f7. So this is game over. So king takes f7 occurred in the game, queen e6 check, king e8, d5, Next stop, d6, and white is getting his, uh, his piece back. The attack rages on, and he'll have, an extra, he'll have extra material to boot. Bishop d7, queen e5. Again, d6 is next. So rook f5, but now queen h8 check. d6 is still threatened, as is queen takes g6 check. So bishop f5 covers that and seems to prevent d6, except that it doesn't. d6 anyway, queen d6, rook a to d1. If the queen moves, well, he has to prevent queen takes e7 mate. Also, knight to d5 is a threat. It's too much. Black played knight f6, and white just took anyway, and black resigned, because after knight h7, knight to d5 grabs a rook. The threat is rook takes e7 checkmate, and on rook f7, there's knight to c7 check, and then knight takes a8. Okay, so that was that game. So that takes care of knight c4. Next up is b5. And here we've got some really heavy hitters. So there, there's a, a Kramnik Anand game in here, as well as another Bacro uh, Edward game. So let's let's jump right in. All right. Well, from here, White has played Rook A to D1. That's the main move. But Queen F4 uh, has been played too. And now we've got more choices. We'll start with Bishop to B7. Uh, Rook to A7 was played by Anand, I think. I think that's right. So we'll start with Bishop to B7. Well, now. Queen h4, and black is in, well, is already in trouble, frankly. If he plays h6, you guessed it, we take on h6. Now, if black takes, queen h6. All right, let's say b4 here, and now knight to g5. b takes c3. And here, a very nice, very methodical winning approach. Rook a to e1. What in the world is the idea of this? Well, if black does nothing, white plays rook takes e6. Threatening rook takes f6. If black then plays fe, so I'll at least demonstrate this with arrows. Um, sorry. If f takes e6, then check here, king h8, 
the bishop goes back to f5 check, the king goes to g8, and then bishop e6 check, rook f7, bishop takes f7, checkmate. Okay? So black tries, for instance, queen takes d4. Well, now rook e3 is winning. It's another idea, rook e3, rook g3, or rook h3. But more or less what I showed you still works here. We just go this way. Check, check, rook e6. Okay, if um, f takes g6, then queen g6 followed by rook takes e7 ends the game. If queen g4, threatening mate on g2, then if nothing else, white just does this and picks up the queen. And finally, if queen h4, well, of course, we take. He takes the rook, but queen h6 again threatens that same mate. Bishop h7, f5, e6, f7. So bishop to d5 protects e6. Rook e1. Threatening all over again to play rook takes e6. Here. And now rook e3. So the other point that I mentioned earlier comes to pass here too. Rook to h3 will be mating. All right. So that is what happens on g takes h6. All right. Let's take a look at bishop f3. Here, black gets rid of the knight so it can't go to g5, which makes sense. But the problem is that if you take the bishop now, well, after queen h6, white has the simple idea of king h1 followed by rook to g1. And that one's mating. So black is just busted regardless. The only move here to stay alive is knight h7. And there's a very sneaky defensive resource that black has. If bishop h7, king h7, bishop g5 check, white wins gobs of material. But with the quiet king to h8, it, black survives. Queen h5 is probably best, king h7. But now the bishop on g5 doesn't have the queen on h4 backing it up. And this position is a little bit better for white, but not tremendously better. Black is, is still in the game. Alternatively, white could play queen g3, but again, black is only a, a bit worse. So h6 is in fact possible. It doesn't seem to lose, at least if my analysis is correct. Okay, well, let's go to g6 now and see another trick, d5. Now, it might not be clear what the idea of this is, right? I mean, there's no pressure on the e-file. What's the point? I mean, knight takes d5 is obviously bad, because knight takes d5, and if black recaptures on d5, then bishop takes e7, wins a rook. Or after knight takes d5, knight takes d5, if black plays bishop takes g5, then knight takes g5, and there's the threat of mate on h7. So black doesn't have the chance to recapture on d5. Okay, black should play bishop takes d5, and then white's choices are between knight to e4 and putting one rook or another on d1. But instead, black tried b4, again, hoping to just shoo, off, shoo away the knight and then take on d5 with all comfort. But d6. So I mentioned this idea quite a while ago, and here it is. Death on the diagonal. Okay, if queen takes d6, well, b takes c3 would just be a blunder. d, e, and then bishop f6, and queen h6 for that matter. So black is just going to get mated. So queen d6, and now knight e4, another fiendish trick. Okay, if bishop e4, bishop e4, um, king g7, it's probably best, but just takes, takes, and rook over is winning. So knight takes e4, bishop e7, this is winning. And finally, if knight takes e4, bishop e7, queen c6, takes, takes, queen e4, okay, take this again, and then another little swish and zoogie here, bishop takes b4. So material is even, but... White is winning the exchange. There's no way to save the knight and the rook, well, and save the exchange at the same time. Probably black should have played bishop f3, but he played knight c6. And now it's an exchange and a pawn, and uh, black really didn't have any chance to save the game. So this was uh, Bacro against Edward from Le Port Marly in, well, earlier this year, in 2012. Alrighty, so that's still more analysis. Okay, so we go back, 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 back to this position. And now we look at rook a7 instead of bishop to b7. All right, so, sorry, rook a to d1, bishop b7. And now this is Kramnik Anand from, what tournament was this? This is from Dortmund in 2001. All right, what, is, what does white do here? Well, it's a classic move. It still always is uh, looks brilliant when you see it, but it is one of white's standard tricks in isolated queen pawn positions. All right, the pawn can be taken four different ways, 
but each has a drawback. Well, obviously taking with the queen is, <laughs> the, the, the drawback is transparent there. But the other three moves um, look much more plausible, but let's see what's wrong with each of them. So if knight takes d5, white to move and win, what do you do? Well, queen h4 threatens both mate and d7, but we see that knight on d5 holding that bishop, um, keeping it protected. So let's get rid of the knight. Rook takes d5, bishop d5. And now, even more effective, we take this guy with check. And we take this guy, and then bishop b7. Because notice that rook on a7, so very sneaky. He's got uh, support there. But after queen e7, knight g5, there's no defense to queen h7 mate, except, well, bishop b4 throws away the bishop, and then the same problem. So, um, and moving the rook makes it mate on h8. So black has to play queen g5. And here, while it's only um, a queen for a rook and a bishop, it's enough. And um, black doesn't really have sufficiently well-coordinated forces for, um, for that material deficit to be overcome. So white is winning here. Okay, knight takes d5 is a loser. Well, e takes d5 is, um, doesn't, doesn't meet with any similarly flashy knockout punch, but white is probably, if not winning, then close to winning here too. Rook f to e8, sometimes threatening rook e7 kinds of ideas. So bishop a8 probably helps out a bit. Queen h4, and now black's best is not h6, but h5. And we'll see this kind of strange, ugly duckling of a move um, more than once in the um, in the analysis to come. So here, knight to d4 is best, jumping into f5 or getting ready to. Rook e8, knight f5, knight c6. And here with basically all of white's pieces on their very best squares, if he doesn't have a breakthrough now, there's not one to be had. And in fact, there is one. Knight takes g7, although knight takes d5 is also very nice. But let's let's just stick to knight takes g7. This this is kind of the, uh, the the flashiest of the bunch. So king takes g7, and now another beautiful move, bishop to h6 check. And the point is to uh, allow the, the black, sorry, the white queen to staircase in on the black squares. For instance, king h6, queen f4, king g7, queen g5, king f8, queen h6, king g8, and now rook takes d5, and a forced mate is on the way. If black takes with the knight, then queen h7 followed by queen h8 is checkmate. Rook to g5 is an immediate checkmate threat, and um, there's really no good way to deal with this. All right, so that is what happens if black accepts gift number two. If he plays king h8, well, white just insists. Bishop to g7 check. And if king g7, queen g5 just repeats what we looked at. King to g8 is a somewhat more resilient try, but black still gets hammered. Knight takes d5. Okay, knight takes d5 is pretty much forced. Now queen h5, threatening queen h7 and queen h8 mate. Black might as well just take the bishop, but now it's mate and two. Queen h7 uh, check, and whichever rank the black king goes to, the white queen goes to the same rank on the h-file and it's checkmate. Like, like so, or like so. Alright, so that takes care of E takes d5. Finally, there's the move in the game. Bishop takes d5. Kramnik took. And here, if knight takes d5, the same trick we, we just saw works again. Rook takes d5, bishop h7, queen h4, bishop e7, and then knight to g5, picking up the queen. And again, um, white's winning. It's a slightly different position. In the, uh, the earlier one, black still had a bishop and white still had a knight. But same verdict, same basic problem. So instead of knight takes d5, Anand played e takes d5. Here, both rook f to e1 and knight to d4 are very strong moves, building up. Kramnik chose instead the uh, the natural queen h4. Anand played h5. Again, knight to d4 is very good, but Kramnik's move is quite good too. Rook f to e1, knight c6, and now g4. So a nice um, nice breakthrough move here. Now, it might not seem that bad. After queen d6, uh, white plays g takes h5, and you know, what's what's the big deal? Well, he's going to play h6, and that's really going to going to crack up the, the black kingside structure. Anand played queen to b4, offering a trade of queens. Kravnik obliges. He plays h6, takes, takes. And although black has managed to avoid both mate and material loss, his position is still very bad. White's bishops are really good. Black's pawn structure is fragmented. White's pieces are far better posted than black's. And, um, and Kravnik went on to win 
in good style. So I'll just quickly go through the remaining moves. Knight e4, okay, he took, and he takes here, and he takes this guy, and in this position, white's up a pawn, and black's forces are still very, very much dominated. One idea now is just to play rook takes e7, knight f5, take on e7, and then play rook a6. Okay, on on played rook to c5 to uh, eliminate the knight f5 aspect of that. Rook to g4 check, knight f3, knight g6, knight g5, and now there goes still another pawn. And with the mate threat, Anand was forced to exchange rooks. And very important thing I'll note here at the end of the game. If white were to play rook takes a6, the game would be a draw. F Well, rook and f and h pawn against rook, assuming that the king is in a decent position and not cut off on the back rank, is a draw. But Kramnik played rook to a4, and this makes all the difference in the world. White will now proceed to advance the, the kingside pawns. Well, in fact, he has two good plans. He could um, slowly advance the kingside pawns, and then at some point, at some convenient moment, break with his king over to the queen side, grab the a pawn, and win with the b pawn. That's idea one. Idea two is to just advance the, uh, the f and h pawns with the king. And the problem for black is that if he... Um, abandons the b-file with the rook, then white just plays rook takes a6, and that makes it easy. On the other hand, if he keeps his rook stuck on b1, 2, and 3, well, then white will be able to just gain a lot of ground, and um, and eventually the black king will be forced forced too far back. So let's say, for instance, that white has brought his um, pawns on f5 and h5, the king on g5, and it's his move, well, then he can play rook takes a6. Rook a6, rook b4, rook a7 check, and then the black king is cut off on the back rank, and it's a theoretical win. So Anand knew all of this and much more besides, and resigned. Okay, so that uh, takes care of white's 13th move alternative, rook a to d1. Now we'll turn to queen f4. And, or sorry, the other way around. We looked at queen f4, we'll look at rook a to d1 now. All right, well here, black has tried several moves. We'll look at knight to c4. We'll look at b4, and then we'll look at bishop to b7, which was chosen in our main game. So, knight to c4, queen f4, and here perhaps white should, or black should choose bishop to b7 when white can pick, among other options, between queen to h4 and, again, the central break, d5. So, rook a7, knight e5, rook c7, knight takes c4, white's already better. Uh, black could try rook takes c4, but after bishop b th sorry after bishop to b3 queen h4 maybe h5 is okay so bishop to b3 rook c7 d5 knight d5 and i suspect that this time around white's a little bit better but it's nothing too serious so maybe rook c4 was the best way uh, this is another Kramnik anand game uh, from leon in 2002 in that game anand played b takes c4 and now uh, d5 is interesting and rook f to e1 is good, but Kramnik played more simply. Bishop takes f6, bishop f6, and now d5. Well, this is unpleasant, and e takes d5 may just be losing. So Anand played e5, keeping the d-file closed. Queen f3, rook b7, and now queen e4, since he can grab the c-pawn. And here, white is clearly better. Uh, material is even, but white's pieces are obviously far more active, and the d pawn is just uh, a real terror, and Kranich was able to just tie black up or tie black down, and win pretty straightforwardly. So again, just to go through the moves quickly. So we have this exchange, and now this is very good. So now it's a pure major piece ending, and with a pawn on d7, uh, black has no chances to hold. So he's too passive. The rook on f8 is stuck, and um, it's just a matter of time. Queen f6, okay, and black played this, and Anand gave up here. So he's going to lose at least the f5 pawn, probably the h5 pawn as well. The best he can do is probably win the d-pawn for those two weaknesses on the fifth rank, and then the three-on-one um, rook ending, single rook ending, is just um, trivial. Okay, so that was knight to c4 here. Another try is b4. Again, hoping to, to displace this knight. And the idea, I mean, we keep seeing it not work, but it doesn't mean it's a bad concept. I mean, it's actually a very good concept. 
That knight can sometimes go to e4, sometimes it supports the d5 pawn break. So it's really very logical. It's just that um, sometimes it doesn't work. And it turns out that in the examples we've seen, uh, it hasn't. So here the best move is queen to d3. And now we're following the game. Uh, what game is this? This is Bacro against Dominguez Perez in Beal in 2008. All right. If b takes e3, well, we've seen this idea already. Bishop takes f6. Of course, black can't recapture because queen takes h7 is mate. And if g6, white just trades and plays queen c3. And for a change, white's up material, up a pawn, and uh, black has no compensation for this. So g6 here is pretty much forced. And now, bang, d5 once again. It doesn't matter that the man on c3 is hanging. It still works. Well, um, what are the points? Well, one threat is, of course, to play d6. So that's, that's always there, too. If black plays knight to b7 to stop that, then knight e5 is another nice shot. The point being that b takes c3 is met by knight c6, and then takes queen f3, threatening bishop f6. And on king g7, once again our old friend d6 comes to the rescue. Um, if queen to d8, then forward, d7. Bishop takes d7, rook takes d7. If queen d7, then black just gets mated. And if knight takes d7, of course, we just bag the queen. Okay, if knight takes d8, the rook drops. But if rook takes, then queen b7. And here, white is up, well, up a full piece. It has a queen and bishop for rook, knight, and pawn. So, um, instead of queen to d8, black can play knight to d6, just returning the piece. Except, instead of rook d6, white plays queen a8. And, okay, if, if this, then bishop h6 wins more material, so rook c8, a4, and um, white's going to win the c3 pawn, after which it's a full exchange, and black really has no compensation. White is winning. Okay, so back to d5. We just looked at knight b7 and saw that it was met, met by this neat little idea. Let's go back and see e takes d5. So this is back to the game. So now knight takes d5, queen d5 takes, 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 takes. And black has escaped to an endgame with even material, but if you look at the, the placement of the pieces, the material is even, but the position isn't. White has more space, better development, better coordination, and, um, and also white's, or black's queenside pawns are a little bit potentially overextended, and the pawn on f7 is potentially a target as well. So the game, I'd say white's a bit better, somewhere between slightly and clearly better. I mean, it's, it's not just a little edge, but I don't think that white is just winning with perfect play either. But still, black is in a lot of trouble here and um, never really managed to, to unravel completely. So you can see white's still extremely active and now he's going to round up the pawn when he wants. Okay, so black is still up a pawn, but the threat is bishop takes g6 because if fg then rook g7, rook h7, rook h7 and then rook a to g7 is checkmate. So king g7, but now rook a6, threatening to take on g6 all the same. Still threatening to take on g7, uh, g6. Okay, and then g4. All right, so black is still up his pawn, but he can't move anything. Rook e8, king f1, so he's not letting the rook out. Rook c5, and this is finally the decisive error, but it was practically impossible to play the position. Rook a8, maybe king f8 is better now, but bishop to b3, and... Um, what can black do? Th threatening just to take the knight, and if knight e6, then rook a to a7, threatening to take on f7, and if knight d8, then rook f7, and rook c7 wins. So, black played rook c1 check, king g2, rook c2, and after bishop takes f7, resigned. Um, if he moves the rook, then bishop to b3 check, wins the rook on c2. If he plays knight takes f7, then rook takes e8, and... Um, White is up the exchange and quite possibly going to be a rook ahead here shortly. Okay, so that is one more line down. So that takes care of b4. So now finally we're up to bishop to b7. Okay, queen f4 is the most usual move here, but we're not going to look at it, to your relief, no doubt. Uh, instead, d5 was played by Lesnitsa. And here, um, knight to c4 is possible, maybe a better try than what uh, Edward played. E takes d5 is the main line, 
Um, but again, we, we've seen that black can have all kinds of trouble in positions like this. You know, knight d4, knight f5 is one idea of many. Well, uh, as I said, Edward played bishop takes d5, and this didn't really solve his problems either. The good news is because it's a novelty, there are no more uh, game citations along the way. So here we go the rest of the way. It's just this game. All right, knight takes d5, e takes d5. Um, if knight takes d5, bishop takes e7 is um, is winning, I think. So e takes d5, rook f to e1. And now the threat is to play rook takes e7 and then queen a5. Loose pieces drop off. That knight on a5 is not so secure. Well, black has a choice here. He can go to c6 or he can go to c4. And um, and he has a third move, too. We'll, we'll come to that um, later. So let's, let's start with a look at knight to c4. Well, queen f4, knight takes b2, might as well. Queen h4, familiar threat, bishop takes f6, and then mate on h7. Well, now we'll look at h6 and h5. If h6, it's good old faithful bishop takes h6, winning the day. If black grabs the rook, and then we take this guy, threatening queen h8 mate. And if he does this, we staircase in and then play rook to e5, threatening rook to g5 mate. If the knight goes almost anywhere, then queen h7 is mate. So knight to e4 is the only move to keep g5 under control and um, block the bishop on c2. But now rook h5 and it's mate next move. Bishop f6, queen h7, for example. Okay, so that means that the rook is poisoned on d1. How about the bishop? Can we grab this one? Well, queen h6. Okay, if knight d1, rook e5 once again, knight e4, rook h5. Same thing. Finally, there's knight to e4 right away, plugging up all the lines and hoping to gain a tempo with the attack on the queen. But now white plays queen g4 and saves his bishop. And threatens mate, of course. So bishop f6, bishop takes e4. Knight d1, rook d1. And material is even right now. It's um, two minor pieces for a rook and a pawn. And with this attack and with d5 ready to drop, black is really lost. You could try de4. This is at least uh, kind of a clever idea. Black has um, almost enough material for the uh, almost enough material right now. And he's threatening the knight. And he's threatening rook to d1. But knight h4 and the queen covers the, uh, the d1 square crucially. And after king h8, bishop b3. Black doesn't have anything. Uh, again, it's fortunate. But if bishop takes h4, queen h4 comes with check. Otherwise, rook to d1 would be would be winning. So white wins here, and that means in turn that h6 doesn't hold. Well, how about h5? Well, on this, then bishop f6, queen h5, threatening mate, g6, and no surprise, we sacrifice here too. Threatening mate on h7, and on rook f6 we give check, and then rook to d4. All right, what's the idea of this? Well. One idea is to play, well, you're saving the rook, of course, but there's also the idea of rook to f4, threatening knight to e6 check, and also rook to g4, again threatening knight to e6 check. Well, how about queen to d7, so there's no knight to e6 check? Bad news, you play it anyway. All right, if rook takes e6, rook f4 check. Okay, if king e8, then check, check, and white just wins everything, or queen f7. If king e7, then queen g7, we take this guy, that's checkmate, or if queen e6, rook f6, and white ends up with a decisive material advantage. So no, no panacea there. Well, how about queen takes e6? Well then, rook e6, rook f4, and queen h4. And this actually gives black some chances. I think white has to play queen d6 or else black and hold. But this I think white should win. So queen and two pawns versus rook and two minor pieces is approximately equal, but white's queen is a beast in the center of the board, black's pieces don't coordinate very well, and the 3-0 three, three kingside majority should make a difference too. I think white has good winning chances here. All right, so knight to c4 does not hold the, does not hold the position if my analysis is, is accurate. Knight c6 is the move in the game, but I think the best move is rook to c8. And um, so this takes care of the rook e7, queen a5 threat because the bishop on c2 will hang. Um, 
White's best is, I think, bishop to f5. And now if the rook moves, then again there's rook e7, queen a5. And, of course, rook c7 would take care of it in one sense, because rook e7, rook e7, but if you play rook c7, you just drop the knight on a5 immediately. Black needs to counterattack. Knight c4 now. White can try queen e2 and queen d4. These are both safe alternatives. But queen f4 is, of course, the most principled try. And here I think black can just survive. Rook c6. The introduction of the rook to the defense makes a big difference. Queen h4, and now not h5. I think if h5, white is better here, pretty seriously better. But instead, h6. Well, taking is the usual beginning of the end, but in this, in this instance, it's not. If black takes, it is. Okay, so this variation, I think, is, is just winning for white. Threatening mate, and okay, it's just whites up the exchange and a pawn and has an attack. If rook to c4, then rook d3, the rook comes over, and that mates. But knight e4 this time works out really well because there's the threat of rook takes on h6. Okay, if queen to g4, well, there it goes. Bishop e4, and now the rook swings back to d6. And after this big capture fest, black is, is doing fine. Um, you know, and the a2 pawn is loose. And here I think uh, the burden is on white to prove that he's got enough for the pawn and that those queenside pawns won't um, carry the day. I, I think probably white should have enough to draw, but we're talking about drawing here, not winning. So that's, that's a change. Instead of queen and g4, there's also bishop h7 check. So this tricky move, king h7, bishop g5 check. And at first glance, it looks like white has found yet another win. But the rook to the, to the rescue, again, rook h6. And now he saves the rook, protects the d5 pawn. g4 is best. And now, again, we have all kinds of violence going on here. But somehow, black manages to stay afloat. Now, he should not play de because after knight to g5 check, white wins the rook, and the rook on d4 protects the bishop on d8. Very fancy. But rook takes f3, takes care of that, and after rook takes d5, the position, I think, is equal. So there were other ways that white could handle rook to c8, but none, you know, I, I don't think there were any, any clear-cut knockout blows. Rook to c8, I believe, is black's best try. And if he's going, if black... Uh, players with black are going to repeat this this um, innovation of Edwards. They should try rook c8 here, I believe. In the game, black tried knight to c6, queen f4, and here white's initiative is very, very dangerous. Black was unable to find a good defense. He played knight to h5, queen h4, takes, and now queen takes. All right, if, if knight takes g5, probably g6 is um, is sufficient. But queen h5 is more more worrisome, h6. Now, bishop to e4, I think, is a good move for white. Um, getting another rook into the action, as well as giving the uh, the bishop the chance for another very good diagonal. But h4, I think, is even better. Bishop e7, rook takes d5. Here, black uh, has to choose, I think, between queen b6 and queen c7. In the game, he went to b6. If he goes to c7, then queen f5, with the idea of rook to d7 looks um, maybe not decisive, but but nearly so. And this, this holds even if g6. Rook to d7 all the same. And on queen c8, queen d5. The queen's beautifully centralized. White threatens to take... Uh, well, actually, no, white does not threaten to take twice on e7 because the bishop hangs on c2. But white is threatening to play bishop takes g6. Knight to b4. Well, queen d2... Queen c2 allows black to avoid an immediate immediate catastrophe. All the same, white with the two rooks on the seventh rank, knight to e5 is coming, has to have a, a pretty serious advantage here. But this at least is maybe a better try than the game. The game doesn't work out well at all. Queen to b6, queen f5, softening up black's kingside, g6, queen f4. And here black misses a, a very nice tactical trick. He plays king to g7. Or he should have played king to g7, excuse me. That would have been correct, just protecting the h6 pawn. And now, for instance, rook to d7 gives white a, a big edge. If rook a7, then rook e takes e7. Knight e7, queen e5 check. And the problem for black is that 
if queen f6, white just grabs the rook, and then he's up a piece for nothing. So he's got to go back to g8, but then white just takes twice and has two pieces for, for a, a rook, and a better position as well. This is probably winning. Well, in the game, the win came much, much sooner. Black played rook a to d8, and now white wins the game in one move. Very pretty move. Rook h5. The threat, of course, is not rook h6, although that's probably going to be good enough too, but queen takes h6. Threatening queen h7 mate, queen h8 mate, and if g takes h5 there, queen h7 is still checkmate thanks to the bishop on c2. Black might as well take the rook here if he's going to play on. He, in fact, resigned. But after g takes h5, queen f5, and mate is going to be uh, is looming on h7 or h8, and I don't think black can stop it, even if he wants to give away as many pieces as possible. I mean, all he can do ultimately, besides spite moves like queen f2 or rook to d3, is to play rook f to e8, and then queen h7, queen h8 is checkmate. So, a great game, well, a very good game by Lesnitsa. He played very nicely, and uh, I, I think certainly put the hurt on, on uh, Edward's new, um, new move. And uh, as we can see, though, this is really a very dangerous system for black to play. I mean, some of the world's greatest players have tried this with black and have ended up as roadkill. I mean, it's there, there are so many attacking resources that white has at his disposal that you really, really, really have to know what you're doing. And if a, a very strong professional GM like, like Edouard can make a novelty on move, um, let's see, what move is that? I think 15, oh, 14, and then just be completely lost you know, within 10 moves, it, it shows you how dangerous this really is. I mean, probably by, well, I mean, just, just a couple of moves later, I mean, already at this point, Black's game is, is really problematic. I mean, he might already be clearly worse. So, you know, if you guys play the Queen's Gambit Accepted, you really need to have something to either avoid this or to uh, be prepared for this. And those of you who play white, um, if, you, if you face the, uh, the Queen's Gambit Accepted, this is something that's uh, absolutely worth heading for. All right, well, this has been a pretty long recording. I, I know a few times I went a little bit fast, but hopefully um, you guys got a lot out of this. You can always replay it. You, know, you can slow me down by just hitting the pause button. And um, anyway, I hope you find this uh, very beneficial. So thanks a lot. See you next time.